We're going to move on now to our final presentation of the day. Uh, apologies, Garvin, somebody's got to come last, and unfortunately, <laughs> you have to That's come. Quite all right. <laughs> you have to come after the star event. Oh, that was amazing. <laughs> no, what we... do I have to say after that? <laughs> <laughs> well, if you can do a quick artwork for uh, some stop motion animation in the background, that would be absolutely excellent. You've got 30 seconds. Wow. <laughs> so we're going to hear from Garvin talking about addressing racism in the 20th, 21st century. And Garvin is from uh, Qualitary uh, Kick. His artistic practice is informed by his British, Caribbean and Indian cultural heritage. Many of his creations have been exhibited internationally, with some residing in the collections of Grace and Perry and the National Trust for Scotland. Garvin developed expertise in art and heritage conservation by working for the Pearl Collection and the v a in London, where he developed and evaluated research grants worth more, more than £5 million. Over to you, Garvin. Okay, I'm going to need to shrink the screen. Great. So good afternoon. I am one of the founders and co-directors of Equality, a community interest company which delivers practical training and experiential opportunities in the heritage crafts and the land-based sector, with a particular emphasis on women, ethnic minorities, people with disabilities, and those who've been economically disadvantaged. As an artist with extensive experience in the heritage sector, I've included images of my work throughout this presentation as indicators of some of the materials and techno techniques that Equality can teach. This piece, uh, I Wish I Was Like You, explores the insecurities that humans face due to the superficial differences that we all have. Next slide, please. Thank you. Today I will be speaking about my transatlantic experiences in art and heritage, the universal challenges to the success of heritage, and the benefits equality can offer to Scottish heritage. This image here juxtaposes the disposal of individuals into the ocean during the transatlantic slave trade and the disposal of objects into the river in Bristol by protesters earlier this year. Just today, in fact, uh, the Darth Vader statue was placed into the location that was once occupied by that Coulson statue in Bristol in honor of David Prowse. Next slide, please. I came to Scotland to study heritage in the form of stained glass and in the process contributed to Scotland's heritage myself. My love of stained glass started in the US from my teacher Fred Loix who created works of art for John F. Kennedy, Nelson Rockefeller, Frank Lloyd Wright and the Library of Congress. While studying at Edinburgh College of Art, I gained significant growth in my work. My love of heritage started as a child in Trinidad as we lived on the route through which the carnival passed in Port of Spain. The cultures of the West Africans, Indians, Caribbees, Arawaks, French, Spanish, Syrian, Portuguese, and Chinese were all on display in ingredients that came together in my formative years. The image on the left is myself and my brother during those years, where I'm so focused that I don't even notice the camera. Next image, please. As Lisa Williams discussed this morning, peoples of color have been a part of the natural and built heritage in the UK since the third century. Next slide, please. With six layers of paint on the front and three on the back, this stained glass window of John the Baptist's head is in the style of the 14th century and I made this while studying for an MA in stained glass conservation and heritage management at the University of York. It's autobiographical in nature, as most of my work is, and it exemplifies a lot of my experience at that institution. I found myself as the only one of my gender in my cohort in a university where no one looked like me. My time there continued to be unbalanced as I had more experience than my cohort in stained glass and the director of the program had little experience working in class herself. Next slide, please. So 
sorry, Zoom keeps disappearing on me. Uh, I'm pleased to say that my best experience occurred during my MA course here in Scotland when I was on a placement at the Burrell Collection. There I was able to work on 14th century collections of stained glass. It was a really positive and rewarding experience. And another positive experience that I've had in museums was working recently on grant applications for the V&A in London. Next slide, please. This stained glass window is based on an image that I made while I was in Glasgow. This was a photograph that was taken at the necropolis in Glasgow. But there have also been curious experiences that have occurred while here in Scotland. Heritage lasts because of resilience, both in buildings and in people. It's important to note that racism can have an erosive effect both on the creation and innovation of an individual. In one experience here, I applied to be on, the, on an African arts charity where none of the board members happened to be African. And even though they were overwhelmed with my progressive ideas, they were determined to relegate my input to that of an advisor where I would be doing all the work without any of the benefit or clout of clout or credit. Most recently, I applied for a BAME traineeship program this summer, and it soon became evident that many of the people in the cohort were highly skilled professionals who were sold a scheme that was well below their skill level and asked to volunteer their time uh, in a quite curious fashion. Next slide, please. While studying for an MFA on the other side of the Atlantic in New York at Rochester Institute of Technology, I took the opportunity to explore more of my heritage and its ties to Scotland, bringing together elements of what's considered a quintessentially British tradition. I threw all of the pottery that's on that table and baked the goods and created an installation where I could dine and discuss with my professors, incorporating many of the elements of my heritage, which are entwined with the transatlantic slave trade including tea from India, sugar from the Caribbean, and woolen and linen cloths from Britain. Next slide, please. While exploring innovative techniques, I took the opportunity to explore the heritage of other peoples. Incorporating printmaking into ceramics, I developed a wet porcelain transfer technique onto traditional Korean moon jar vessels. On the vessel itself, you can see the image of two children of different races embracing each other. While studying at the School for American Crafts, I found myself being marginalized. And incidentally, there was another student of color there who was treated similarly. We were told by one professor that in his 35 years of teaching, he'd actually only had four students of color. My colleague and I fought to transfer out of the ceramics program, and then we made our way into the fine arts program. Next slide, please. Without the imposition of barriers and in a newly positive environment, I was soon making work that eclipsed that of my peers and professors and continuing to work in exploring my heritage. I also concurrently worked as the archive and collections manager for the Landmark Society of Western New York. There, I developed and managed a comprehensive strategy for cataloging their entire collection of art and historical objects. Incidentally, my friend who also transferred to the fine art program with me also on, went on to bigger and better things. Just earlier this year, she won the Turner Prize. Next slide, please. Even in the 21st century, we, there are individuals and groups who continue to benefit from subjugating their fellow human beings. If we want racism to be eradicated, we have to fight it. Next slide, please. With challenge comes the opportunity to improve. 2020 has been a great year for social, financial, and political vacillation. This lovely man, as you can see, um, reminds us that we should all treat racism like COVID-19. Next slide, please.
To address the imbalance of power, we must acknowledge and remove the prejudices and practices that have been endemic within society. Next slide, please. Are we even asking the right questions? Finding out how cats should wear pants is not just a matter of perspective. It's sometimes worth considering if we are even asking the right questions and avoid getting distracted by inconsequential issues. Herein, we should realize that cats shouldn't be wearing pants at all because they are born with their own clothes. Next slide, please. So if racism is such a bad thing, why does it exist? I posit that racism has and continues to be based on the acronym LIE, L-I-E. L is for laziness. Some people don't like to work and through the othering of individuals and groups, the divide between the worker and the shirker continue to be cemented. I is for insecurity and ignorance. Some people have never interacted with those other than themselves or have been exposed to anecdotal tales that work to reinforce negative stereotypes. E is for evil. Some people just love profiting off the misery of others and can often be rewarded with finances, peerages, and other trappings of aristocracy. Next slide, please. Race creates challenges. Racism implies that life is a race with society creating obstacles to prevent others from moving forward. This man has hurdles too, but his are easily circumvented and fewer in number. Unencumbered by obstacles, his path requires less planning and execution. Next slide, please. Making sure that individuals feel welcomed and supported can foster diversity in the workplace. Next slide, please. Diversity fosters productivity, but diversity needs a better PR team so that it can be viewed as an opportunity for progress and not a challenge to the status quo. Next slide, please. One of the goals of diversity and anti-racism is the fostering of inclusion, but what is inclusion? Diversity is being asked to the party, whereas inclusion is being asked to dance. Next slide, please. Racism has been pervasive for so long that many individuals and organizations forget that people are people. One of the questions that are often asked by individuals, particularly managers and those in HR are, how do I know if that person will fit into our organization? It's important to remember that wondering if someone will fit into your culture of work should not be a concern if you're a legitimately professional organization. Individuals should be hired based on whether or not they can do the job, and not if they look or think like you. Next slide, please. Having the wrong people at the, the, at the discussion table will not lead to the right conversations being had, as we can see from this ironic photo from the Lady Bird book. Next slide, please. As an organization, Equality is clean, keen on dialogue and encourages active listening and active doing to follow afterwards. It shouldn't be the case that someone's confidence outsurpasses your expertise in any sort of situation. Next slide, please. We deliver practical training and experiential opportunities in the heritage crafts and the land-based sectors. And we provide an inclusive welcoming environment to participate participants to help create a landscape of success for them. This is underpinned by our years of experience working in academia, in heritage, in landscape management, and also in diversity issues. Next slide, please. In the past, some of the training and experiential opportunities offered by Paul Tree have included things such as woodworking, sheep shearing, spinning, hedge laying, bee skep making, which are the little houses that bees live in, where they make honey, uh, guided conservation tours, archaeology tours, and more. Next slide, please. As is often seen in a lot of our slides, our offerings go beyond traditional heritage crafts and incorporate new techniques and processes. We're very keen on championing diversity, not only 
for issues of race, but also for issues of ability and helping people of different socioeconomic backgrounds. And in the upcoming months, we'll also be starting a market garden to supply local fresh produce. Next slide, please. Equality also offers bespoke diversity and inclusion training for organizations and charities who want to invest in the future of their organization and employees rather than just tick a box. Based on the goals and challenges of organizations, we tailor our offering to each of our partners. For individuals, we also offer consultancy and support on a variety of issues, including recognizing and addressing discrimination in the workplace and how to seek support. If your organization is facing challenges, we can help. And if you as an individual are facing challenges, we can help. Next slide, please. Policy benefits no one unless it's put into practice. An unenforced policy is often the tool of institutions where doing the minimum is considered an apex of achievement. Next slide, please. If I can't see over a fence while others can, there may be various reasons within and out with my control that cause that. In the first image, it assumes that everyone benefits from the same supports. In the second, it's seen that individuals are given different support levels to help them. And in the third, the barriers are removed. And that's what we seek to do. Next slide, please. As humans, there's more that binds us together than separates us. When speaking with Grayson Perry at the Metropolitan Museum of Art in New York, we discovered we have much more in common. We both love ceramics, we both love art, we both love dressing up for an occasion. Also, we both come from working class families and were born 18 miles apart from each other. Next slide, please. So we want to create interaction and remove barriers. So what's the next step? Invite myself or one of your directors to join your board. When you have job openings, please email or tweet us. We'll be happy to promote it and disseminate it. We want to get opportunities out to new channels and networks to allow you to work smarter. Email me and we can discuss your training needs. We're currently in the process of renovating our website, which should be up soon, and provide you with more information. Thank you for your time. Thank you very much for that, Garvin. That was really, really interesting. And I think we all really enjoyed hearing about your exploits across the world. Very fascinating stuff.